The Earth is entering the uh, debris field of Halley's Comet, and there's meteors coming in inbound towards Earth because of this. According to Space Weather, meteors from Halley's Comet, Earth is entering a stream of debris from Halley's Comet, source of the annual Aquarid meteor shower. And uh, this is, I'll leave a link below for you for this. For forecasters expect the shower to peak today and tomorrow. Rates could be as high as 30 meteors per hour in the Southern Hemisphere, but only half that in the Northern Hemisphere, that is about 15 an hour. The best time to look is just before local sunrise when the constellation Aquarius is high in the sky. Now, we know we had a uh, meteor uh, fragmenting over the state of Mississippi a few days ago. There was a shock wave and fragments from that meteor fell all over the state. This here is from Halley's Comet debris field. The stream of debris from Halley's Comet. Okay, this shows us the dates. And I'll show you the uh, animation of this and going into uh, 2004. It started, of course, a lot earlier, but uh, this is the debris field. And as you can see, as the comet comes in towards our, the inner solar system and goes around our sun, it speeds up. This is all of the debris fields. You see, drag and turn right, click to pan. That's all right. We can see it. Okay. Data from Peter Jeniskin's visualization developer, Ian Webster. The Eta Aquarius meteor shower peaks in early May when Earth intersects the dust cloud left by the comet Halley. And it goes on, of course, traveling into years on end. Okay, I'll leave a link below for you for this. This is on space weather. And some facts concerning Halley's Comet, the uh, most famous comet in history. Halley's Comet, arguably the most famous. It's a periodic comet. It returns to Earth's vicinity every 75,000 years or so, making it possible for a person to see it twice in their lifetime. It was last here in 1986 and is projected to return back in 2061. The comet is officially called 1P Halley, is named after English astronomer Edmund Halley, or Halley, who examined reports of a comet approaching Earth back in 1531 and 1607 and 1682. He concluded that these three comets were actually the same comet returning over and over again and predicted that it would return in 1758. And Halley's calculations show that at least some comets orbit the sun. He did not live to see the comet's cor uh, correctly predicted return, but the comet was given his name. And for those looking for help with pronunciation, the name traditionally rhymes with the word valley or Halley. Okay, I was wrong. It's not Halley's Comet, it's Halley's Comet. Sorry about that. Now, scientists finally got an up-close look and the comet when it last vanished in 1986, when several spacecraft were sent to Halley's vicinity to sample the composition of the comet. High-powered telescopes also observed the comet as it swung by our Earth. And while the comet won't be back for up-close studies for decades, scientists continue to investigate comets looking at other small bodies. The notable example was the Rosetta probe, which looked at comet 67P, Cheryomov Gerasimenko between 2014 and 16, and concluded that the comet has a different kind of water than our water here on Earth. The first known observation of Halley's comet, or Comet Halley, took place in 239 BC, according to the European Space Agency. Chinese astronomers recorded its passage with the Shi Qi and Wen Xian Thung Kuo Chronicles. Uh, we know that they kept chronicles about everything. Now, another study based on models of Halley's orbit pushed, pushes that first observation back to 466 BC, which would have made it visible by the ancient Greeks. Yes, ancient Greeks had telescopes as well. Now, while Halley's return in six, 164 BC and again in 87 BC, it probably was noted in Babylonian records, 
now housed in the Berlin Museum in London. These texts have important bearing on the orbital motion of the comet in the ancient past, according to research papers in journal Nature magazine noted about the tablets. It's also thought that another appearance of the comet in 1301 AD could have inspired Italian painter Giotto rendering of the star of Bethlehem in the Adoration of the Magi, according to the Britannic Encyclopedia. Halley's most famous appearance occurred shortly before 1066 invasion of England by William the Conqueror. It said that William believed the comet heralded his success. In any case, the comet was put on the Bayeux tapestry, which chronicles the invasion in William's honor. Astronomers in these times, however, saw each appearance of Halley's Comet as a, an isolated event. Comets were often see, foreseen as a sign of great disaster or change in the past. Even when Shakespeare wrote his play Julius Caesar around 1600, just 105 years before Edmund Halley's calculated that the comet return over and over again, he included a now famous phrase speaking of comets as heralds. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes, he said. Astronomy began changing swiftly around Shakespeare's time, though. Many astronomers of his time believed that Earth was the center of the solar system, but Nicholas Copernicus, who died about 20 years before Shakespeare's birth, published findings showing that the center was actually the sun. It took several generations for Copernicus' calculations to take hold in the astronomy community, but when they did, they provided a powerful model for how objects move around the solar system and our universe. Then years passed and the comet appeared in 1531, 1607, 1682. Halley suggested the same comet could return to Earth in 1758. He didn't live long enough to see it. He died in 1742, but his work inspired others to name the comet after him. On each successive journey to the inner solar system, astronomers on Earth turned their telescope skyward to watch Halley's approach. The comet's pass in 1910 was particularly spectacular as the comet flew by about 13.9 million miles from our Earth, which is about 1 15th the distance between Earth and the Sun. And on that occasion, Halley's Comet was captured on camera for the first time. And according to biographer Ar Albert Bigelow Payne, the writer Mark Twain said in 1909, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It's coming again next year, and I expect to go out with it. Twain, Twain died in April 21st, 1910, one day after perihelion, when the comet emerged from the far side of the sun. There's a group of comets called Halley Family Comets, HFC, because they appear to share the same orbital characteristics of Halley, Halley, including being highly in inclined to the orbits of Earth and other planets in the solar system. But this family has a range of inclinations which prompts other astronomers to suggest they have, may have a different origin than Halley's Comet. Some suggest these comets could have evolved from members of the Oort cloud or from centaurs, the objects that generally have the closest approach between Jupiter and the Kuiper Belt. Alternatively, Halley family comets could have come from somewhere just beyond Neptune. When Halley's Comet, Halley's Comet came by Earth in 1986, it was the first time we could send spacecraft to look at it up close. It was fortunate occurrence as the comet ended up being underwhelmingly whelming in observations from Earth. When the comet made its closest approach to the sun, it was on the opposite side of the star from our Earth, making it a faint and distant object some 39 million miles away from us. Several spacecraft successfully made the journey to the comet, and the fleet of spaceships is sometimes dubbed Halley Armada. Two joint Soviet-French probes, Vega 1 and 2, flew nearby, with one of them capturing pictures of the nucleus or heart of the comet for the first time. And the European Space Agency, Geotocraft, got even closer to the nucleus, beaming back spectacular images to Earth. Japan sent two probes of its own, Sagi, Sakigaki. So we'll be seeing these meteor showers. And um, as we said from Halley's, Halley's Comet Debris, the uh, accurate meteor shower that happens every year about this time.
Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.